Behavioral economics studies the effects of psychological, cognitive, emotional, cultural and social factors on the economic decisions of individuals and institutions and how those decisions vary from those implied by classical theory. Behavioral economics is primarily concerned with the bounds of rationality of economic agents. Behavioral models typically integrate insights from psychology, neuroscience and microeconomic theory. The study of behavioral economics includes how market decisions are made and the mechanisms that drive public choice. The three prevalent themes in behavioral economics are Heuristics – Humans make 95% of their decisions using mental shortcuts or rules of thumb. Framing – The collection of anecdotes and stereotypes that make up the mental filters individuals rely on to understand and respond to events. Market inefficiencies, these include mispricing and non rational decision making. In 2002, psychologist Daniel Kahneman was awarded the Nobel Memorial Prize in Economic Sciences, for having integrated insights from psychological research into economic science, especially concerning human judgment and decision making under uncertainty. In 2013, economist Robert J. Schiller received the Nobel Memorial Prize in Economic Sciences for his empirical analysis of asset prices within the field of behavioral finance. In 2017, economist Richard Toller was awarded the Nobel Memorial Prize in Economic Sciences for his contributions to behavioral economics and his pioneering work in establishing that people are predictably irrational in ways that defy economic theory. History During the classical period of economics, microeconomics was closely linked to psychology. For example, Adam Smith wrote the theory of moral sentiments, which proposed psychological explanations of individual behavior, including concerns about fairness and justice. Jeremy Bentham wrote extensively on the psychological underpinnings of utility. Then, during the development of neoclassical economics, economists sought to reshape the discipline as a natural science, deducing behavior from assumptions about the nature of economic agents. They developed the concept of homo economicus, whose behavior was fundamentally rational. Neoclassical economists did incorporate psychological explanations, this was true of Francis Edgeworth, Vilfredo Pareto and Irving Fisher. Economic psychology emerged in the 20th century in the works of Gabriel Tarde, George Cotona, and Laszlo Garay. Expected utility and discounted utility models began to gain acceptance, generating testable hypotheses about decision-making given uncertainty and intertemporal consumption, respectively. Observed and repeatable anomalies eventually challenged those hypotheses, and further steps were taken by Maurice Allais, for example, in setting out the Allais paradox, a decision problem he first presented in 1953 that contradicts the expected utility hypothesis. In the 1960s cognitive psychology began to shed more light on the brain as an information processing device in contrast to behaviorist models. Psychologists in this field, such as Ward Edwards, Amos Tversky and Daniel Kahneman began to compare their cognitive models of decision-making under risk and uncertainty to economic models of rational behavior. Mathematical psychology reflects a long-standing interest in preference transitivity and the measurement of utility. <laughs> <laughs> Bounded rationality Bounded rationality is the idea that when individuals make decisions, their rationality is limited by the tractability of the decision problem, their cognitive limitations and the time available. Decision makers in this view act as satisficers, seeking a satisfactory solution rather than an optimal one. Herbert A. Simon proposed bounded rationality as an alternative basis for the mathematical modeling of decision making. It complements rationality as optimization which views decision-making as a fully rational process of finding an optimal choice given the information available. Simon used the analogy of a pair of scissors, where one blade represents human cognitive limitations and the other the structures of the environment, illustrating how minds compensate for limited resources by exploiting known structural regularity in the environment. Bounded rationality implicates the idea that humans take shortcuts that may lead to suboptimal decision-making. Behavioral economists engage in mapping the decision shortcuts that agents use in order to help increase the effectiveness of human decision making. One treatment of this idea comes from Cass Sunstein and Richard Thaler's nudge. 
Sunstein and Toller recommend that choice architectures are modified in light of human agents' bounded rationality. A widely cited proposal from Sunstein and Toller urges that healthier food be placed at site level in order to increase the likelihood that a person will opt for that choice instead of less healthy option. Some critics of Nudge have lodged attacks that modifying choice architectures will lead to people becoming worse decision makers. Topic. Prospect theory In 1979, Kahneman and Tversky published Prospect Theory, an analysis of decision under risk, that used cognitive psychology to explain various divergences of economic decision making from neoclassical theory. Prospect theory has two stages, an editing stage and an evaluation stage. In the editing stage, risky situations are simplified using various heuristics. In the evaluation phase, risky alternatives are evaluated using various psychological principles that include reference dependence. When evaluating outcomes, the decision maker considers a reference level. Outcomes are then compared to the reference point and classified as gains if greater than the reference point and losses if less than the reference point. Loss aversion losses are avoided more than equivalent gains are sought. In their 1992 paper, Kahneman and Tversky found the median coefficient of loss aversion to be about 2.25, i.e., losses hurt about 2.25 times more than equivalent gains reward. Nonlinear probability weighting – decision makers overweight small probabilities and underweight large probabilities. This gives rise to the inverse S-shaped probability weighting function. Diminishing sensitivity to gains and losses, as the size of the gains and losses relative to the reference point increase in absolute value, the marginal effect on the decision maker's utility or satisfaction falls. Prospect theory is able to explain everything that the two main existing decision theories expected utility theory and rank dependent utility theory can explain. Further, prospect theory has been used to explain phenomena that existing decision theories have great difficulty in explaining. These include backward bending labor supply curves, asymmetric price elasticities, tax evasion and co-movement of stock prices and consumption. In 1992, in the Journal of Risk and Uncertainty, Kahneman and Tversky gave a revised account of prospect theory that they called cumulative prospect theory. The new theory eliminated the editing phase in prospect theory and focused just on the evaluation phase. Its main feature was that it allowed for nonlinear probability weighting in a cumulative manner, which was originally suggested in John Quiggin's rank-dependent utility theory. Psychological traits such as overconfidence, projection bias, and the effects of limited attention are now part of the theory. Other developments include a conference at the University of Chicago, a special behavioral economics edition of the Quarterly Journal of Economics, in memory of Amos Tversky and Kahneman's 2002 Nobel Prize for having "...integrated insights from psychological research into economic science, especially concerning human judgment and decision-making under uncertainty." <laughs> Intertemporal choice Behavioral economics has been applied to intertemporal choice. Intertemporal choice is defined as making a decision and having the effects of such decision happening in a different time. Intertemporal choice behavior is largely inconsistent, as exemplified by George Ainsley's hyperbolic discounting, one of the prominently studied observations, and further developed by David Labson, Ted O'Donohue and Matthew Rabin. Hyperbolic discounting describes the tendency to discount outcomes in the near future more than outcomes in the far future. This pattern of discounting is dynamically inconsistent or time inconsistent, and therefore inconsistent with basic models of rational choice, since the rate of discount between time t and t plus 1 will be low at time t1 when t is the near future, but high at time t when t is the present and time t plus 1 is the near future. This pattern can also be explained through models of sub-additive discounting that distinguish the delay and interval of discounting. People are less patient per time unit over shorter intervals regardless of when they occur. Topic: Other areas of research. Other branches of behavioral economics enrich the model of the utility function without implying inconsistency in preferences. 
Ernst Fair, Armin Fock, and Rabin studied fairness, inequity aversion and reciprocal altruism, weakening the neoclassical assumption of perfect selfishness. This work is particularly applicable to wage setting. The work on intrinsic motivation by Nisi and Rustichini and identity by Akerlof and Cranton assumes that agents derive utility from adopting personal and social norms in addition to conditional expected utility. According to Agarwal, in addition to behavioral deviations from rational equilibrium, markets are also likely to suffer from lagged responses, search costs, externalities of the commons, and other frictions making it difficult to disentangle behavioral effects in market behavior. Conditional expected utility is a form of reasoning where the individual has an illusion of control, and calculates the probabilities of external events and hence their utility as a function of their own action, even when they have no causal ability to affect those external events. Behavioral economics caught on among the general public with the success of books such as Dan Ariely's Predictably Irrational. Practitioners of the discipline have studied quasi-public policy topics such as broadband mapping. Applications for behavioral economics include the modeling of the consumer decision-making process for applications in artificial intelligence and machine learning. The Silicon Valley-based startup Singularities is using the AGM postulates proposed by Alcoron, Gardenfors, and Mackinson the formalization of the concepts of beliefs and change for rational entities—in a symbolic logic to create a machine learning and deduction engine that uses the latest data science and big data algorithms in order to generate the content and conditional rules counterfactuals that capture customers' behaviors and beliefs. Applications of behavioral economics also exist in other disciplines, for example in the area of supply chain management. Natural experiments From a biological point of view, human behaviors are essentially the same during crises accompanied by stock market crashes and during bubble growth when share prices exceed historic highs. During those periods, most market participants see something new for themselves, and this inevitably induces a stress response in them with accompanying changes in their endocrine profiles and motivations. The result is quantitative and qualitative changes in behavior. This is one example where behavior affecting economics and finance can be observed and variably contrasted using behavioral economics. Behavioral economics usefulness applies beyond environments similar to stock exchanges. Selfish reasoning, adult behaviors, and similar, can be identified within criminal concealments, and legal deficiencies and neglect of different types can be observed and discovered. Awareness of indirect consequence or lack of, at least in potential with different experimental models and methods, can be used as well. Behavioral economics potential uses are broad, but its reliability needs scrutiny. Underestimation of the role of novelty as a stressor is the primary shortcoming of current approaches for market research. It is necessary to account for the biologically determined diffusisms of human behavior in everyday low-stress conditions and in response to stressors. Topic. Criticism Critics of behavioral economics typically stress the rationality of economic agents. They contend that experimentally observed behavior has limited application to market situations, as learning opportunities and competition ensure at least a close approximation of rational behavior. Others note that cognitive theories, such as prospect theory, are models of decision-making, not generalized economic behavior, and are only applicable to the sort of once-off decision problems presented to experiment participants or survey respondents. A notable concern is that despite a great deal of rhetoric, no consistent behavioral theory has yet been espoused. Behavioral economists have proposed no unified theory. Until that happens, behavioral economics is a collection of observations. David Gall has argued that many of these issues stem from behavioral economics being too concerned with understanding how behavior deviates from standard economic models rather than with understanding why people behave the way they do. Understanding why behavior occurs is necessary for the creation of generalizable knowledge, the goal of science. He has referred to behavioral economics as a triumph of marketing and particularly cited the example of loss aversion. Traditional economists are skeptical of the experimental and survey-based techniques that behavioral economics uses extensively. 
Economists typically stress revealed preferences over stated preferences from surveys in the determination of economic value. Experiments and surveys are at risk of systemic biases, strategic behavior and lack of incentive compatibility. Topic. Responses Matthew Rabin dismisses these criticisms, countering that consistent results typically are obtained in multiple situations and geographies and can produce good theoretical insight. Behavioral economists, however, responded to these criticisms by focusing on field studies rather than lab experiments. Some economists see a fundamental schism between experimental economics and behavioral economics, but prominent behavioral and experimental economists tend to share techniques and approaches in answering common questions. For example, behavioral economists are investigating neuroeconomics, which is entirely experimental and has not been verified in the field. The epistemological, ontological, and methodological components of behavioral economics are increasingly debated, in particular by historians of economics and economic methodologists. According to some researchers, when studying the mechanisms that form the basis of decision making, especially financial decision making, it is necessary to recognize that most decisions are made under stress because, stress is the nonspecific body response to any demands presented to it. Topic. Applied issues Topic. Nudge theory Nudge is a concept in behavioral science, political theory and economics which proposes positive reinforcement and indirect suggestions as ways to influence the behavior and decision-making of groups or individuals. Nudging contrasts with other ways to achieve compliance, such as education, legislation or enforcement. The concept has influenced British and American politicians. Several nudge units exist around the world at the national level UK, Germany, Japan and others as well as at the international level OECD, World Bank, UN. The first formulation of the term and associated principles was developed in cybernetics by James Wilk before 1995 and described by Brunel University academic DJ Stewart as the art of the nudge, sometimes referred to as micronudges. It also drew on methodological influences from clinical psychotherapy tracing back to Gregory Battison, including contributions from Milton Erickson, Watslawick, Weakland and Fish, and Bill O'Hanlon. In this variant, the nudge is a micro-targeted design geared towards a specific group of people, irrespective of the scale of intended intervention. In 2008, Richard Toller and Cass Sunstein's book Nudge, Improving Decisions About Health, Wealth, and Happiness brought nudge theory to prominence. It also gained a following among U.S. and U.K. politicians, in the private sector and in public health. The authors refer to influencing behavior without coercion as libertarian paternalism and the influencers as choice architects. Toller and Sunstein defined their concept as A nudge, as we will use the term, is any aspect of the choice architecture that alters people's behavior in a predictable way without forbidding any options or significantly changing their economic incentives. To count as a mere nudge, the intervention must be easy and cheap to avoid. Nudges are not mandates. Putting fruit at eye level counts as a nudge. Banning junk food does not. In this form, drawing on behavioral economics, the nudge is more generally applied to influence behavior. One of the most frequently cited examples of a nudge is the etching of the image of a housefly into the men's room urinals at Amsterdam's Schiphol Airport, which is intended to improve the aim. Nudging techniques aim to use judgmental heuristics to our advantage. In other words, a nudge alters the environment so that when heuristic, or system 1, decision-making is used, the resulting choice will be the most positive or desired outcome. An example of such a nudge is switching the placement of junk food in a store, so that fruit and other healthy options are located next to the cash register, while junk food is relocated to another part of the store. In 2008, the United States appointed Sunstein, who helped develop the theory, as administrator of the Office of Information and Regulatory Affairs. Notable applications of nudge theory include the formation of the British Behavioral Insights Team in 2010. It is often called the nudge unit. At the British Cabinet Office, headed by David Halpern, both Prime Minister David Cameron and President Barack Obama sought to employ nudge theory to advance domestic policy goals during their terms. 
In Australia, the Government of New South Wales established a Behavioural Insights Community of Practice. Nudge theory has also been applied to business management and corporate culture, such as in relation to health, safety and environment and human resources. Regarding its application to HSE, one of the primary goals of Nudge is to achieve a zero accident culture. Leading Silicon Valley companies are forerunners in applying Nudge theory in a corporate setting. These companies are using nudges in various forms to increase the productivity and happiness of employees. Recently, further companies are gaining interest in using what is called nudge management to improve the productivity of their white collar workers. Behavioral insights and nudges are currently used in many countries around the world. Topic criticisms Nudging has also been criticized. Tammy Boyce, from Public Health Foundation The King's Fund, has said, we need to move away from short-term, politically motivated initiatives such as the nudging people idea, which is not based on any good evidence and doesn't help people make long-term behavior changes. Cass Sunstein has responded to critiques at length in his The Ethics of Influence making the case in favor of nudging against charges that nudges diminish autonomy, threaten dignity, violate liberties, or reduce welfare. Ethicists have debated this rigorously. These charges have been made by various participants in the debate from Bovins to Goodwin. Wilkinson for example charges nudges for being manipulative, while others such as Young question their scientific credibility. Some, such as Hausman and Welch have inquired whether nudging should be permissible on grounds of distributive justice. Lepenis and Maleka have questioned whether nudges are compatible with the rule of law. Similarly, legal scholars have discussed the role of nudges in the law. Behavioral economists such as Bob Sugden have pointed out that the underlying normative benchmark of nudging is still homo oeconomicus, despite the proponent's claim to the contrary. It has been remarked that nudging is also a euphemism for psychological manipulation as practiced in social engineering. There exists an anticipation and, simultaneously, implicit criticism of the nudge theory in works of Hungarian social psychologists who emphasize the active participation in the nudge of its target Ferenc Marais, Laszlo Garay. Topic Behavioral finance The central issue in behavioral finance is explaining why market participants make irrational systematic errors contrary to assumption of rational market participants. Such errors affect prices and returns, creating market inefficiencies. The study of behavioral finance also investigates how other participants take advantage arbitrage of such errors and market inefficiencies. Behavioral finance highlights inefficiencies, such as under or over reactions to information, as causes of market trends and, in extreme cases, of bubbles and crashes. Such reactions have been attributed to limited investor attention, overconfidence, overoptimism, mimicry herding instinct, and noise trading. Technical analysts consider behavioral finance to be behavioral economics academic cousin and the theoretical basis for technical analysis. Other key observations include the asymmetry between decisions to acquire or keep resources, known as the bird in the bush paradox, and loss aversion, the unwillingness to let go of a valued possession. Loss aversion appears to manifest itself in investor behavior as a reluctance to sell shares or other equity if doing so would result in a nominal loss. It may also help explain why housing prices rarely, slowly decline to market clearing levels during periods of low demand. Bennert C. and Toller, applying a version of prospect theory, claim to have solved the equity premium puzzle, something conventional finance models so far have been unable to do. Experimental finance applies the experimental method, e.g., creating an artificial market through some kind of simulation software to study people's decision making process and behavior in financial markets. Topic. Quantitative behavioral finance Quantitative behavioral finance uses mathematical and statistical methodology to understand behavioral biases. In marketing research, a study shows little evidence that escalating biases impact marketing decisions. Leading contributors include Gundas Kajanalp, editor of the Journal of Behavioral Finance from 2001 to 04, and collaborators include 2002 Nobel laureate Vernon Smith, David Porter, Don Belenovich, Vladimira Ilyeva, and Amit Duran, and Ray Sturm. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Financial models. Some financial models used in money management and asset valuation incorporate behavioral finance parameters. Examples 
Thaler's model of price reactions to information, with three phases underreaction, adjustment, and overreaction, creating a price trend. One characteristic of overreaction is that average returns following announcements of good news is lower than following bad news. In other words, overreaction occurs if the market reacts too strongly or for too long to news, thus requiring an adjustment in the opposite direction. As a result, outperforming assets in one period is likely to underperform in the following period. This also applies to customers' irrational purchasing habits, the stock image coefficient. Topic. Criticisms Critics such as Eugene Fama typically support the efficient market hypothesis. They contend that behavioral finance is more a collection of anomalies than a true branch of finance and that these anomalies are either quickly priced out of the market or explained by appealing to market microstructure arguments. However, individual cognitive biases are distinct from social biases, the former can be averaged out by the market, while the other can create positive feedback loops that drive the market further and further from a fair price equilibrium. Similarly, for an anomaly to violate market efficiency, an investor must be able to trade against it and earn abnormal profits. This is not the case for many anomalies. A specific example of this criticism appears in some explanations of the equity premium puzzle. It is argued that the cause is entry barriers both practical and psychological and that returns between stocks and bonds should equalize as electronic resources open up the stock market to more traders. In response, others contend that most personal investment funds are managed through superannuation funds, minimizing the effect of these putative entry barriers. In addition, professional investors and fund managers seem to hold more bonds than one would expect given return differentials. Topic. Behavioral game theory Behavioral game theory, invented by Colin Kammerer, analyzes interactive strategic decisions and behavior using the methods of game theory, experimental economics, and experimental psychology. Experiments include testing deviations from typical simplifications of economic theory such as the independence axiom and neglect of altruism, fairness, and framing effects. On the positive side, the method has been applied to interactive learning and social preferences. As a research program, the subject is a development of the last three decades. Topic. Economic reasoning in animals A handful of comparative psychologists have attempted to demonstrate quasi-economic reasoning in non-human animals. Early attempts along these lines focus on the behavior of rats and pigeons. These studies draw on the tenets of comparative psychology, where the main goal is to discover analogues to human behavior in experimentally tractable non-human animals. They are also methodologically similar to the work of Furster and Skinner. Methodological similarities aside, early researchers in non-human economics deviate from behaviorism in their terminology. Although such studies are set up primarily in an operant conditioning chamber using food rewards for pecking per bar pressing behavior, the researchers describe pecking and bar pressing not in terms of reinforcement and stimulus response relationships but instead in terms of work, demand, budget, and labor. Recent studies have adopted a slightly different approach, taking a more evolutionary perspective, comparing economic behavior of humans to a species of non-human primate, the capuchin monkey. Topic. Animal studies Many early studies of non-human economic reasoning were performed on rats and pigeons in an operant conditioning chamber. These studies looked at things like peck rate in the case of the pigeon and bar pressing rate in the case of the rat given certain conditions of reward. Early researchers claim, for example, that response pattern pecking per bar pressing rate is an appropriate analogy to human labor supply. Researchers in this field advocate for the appropriateness of using animal economic behavior to understand the elementary components of human economic behavior. In a paper by Battaglio, Green, and Cagle, they write, Space considerations do not permit a detailed discussion of the reasons why economists should take seriously the investigation of economic theories using non-human subjects. Studies of economic behavior in non-human animals provide a laboratory for identifying, testing, and better understanding general laws of economic behavior. 
Use of this laboratory is predicated on the fact that behavior, as well as structure, vary continuously across species, and that principles of economic behavior would be unique among behavioral principles if they did not apply, with some variation, of course, to the behavior of nonhumans. <laughs> Labor supply The typical laboratory environment to study labor supply in pigeons is set up as follows. Pigeons are first deprived of food. Since the animals become hungry, food becomes highly desired. The pigeons are then placed in an operant conditioning chamber and through orienting and exploring the environment of the chamber they discover that by pecking a small disc located on one side of the chamber, food is delivered to them. In effect, pecking behavior becomes reinforced, as it is associated with food. Before long, the pigeon pecks at the disc or stimulus regularly. In this circumstance, the pigeon is said to work for the food by pecking. The food, then, is thought of as the currency. The value of the currency can be adjusted in several ways, including the amount of food delivered, the rate of food delivery and the type of food delivered some foods are more desirable than others. Economic behavior similar to that observed in humans is discovered when the hungry pigeons stop working, work less when the reward is reduced. Researchers argue that this is similar to labor supply behavior in humans. That is, like humans who, even in need, will only work so much for a given wage, the pigeons demonstrate decreases in pecking work when the reward value is reduced. Topic. Demand In human economics, a typical demand curve has negative slope. This means that as the price of a certain good increase, the amount that consumers are willing and able to purchase decreases. Researchers studying the demand curves of non-human animals, such as rats, also find downward slopes. Researchers have studied demand in rats in a manner distinct from studying labor supply in pigeons. Specifically, in an operant conditioning chamber containing rats as experimental subjects, we require them to press a bar, instead of pecking a small disc, to receive a reward. The reward can be food, reward pellets, water, or a commodity drink such as cherry cola. Unlike in previous pigeon studies, where the work analog was pecking and the monetary analog was a reward, the work analog in this experiment is bar pressing. Under these circumstances, the researchers claim that changing the number of bar presses required to obtain a commodity item is analogous to changing the price of a commodity item in human economics. In effect, results of demand studies in non-human animals show that, as the bar pressing requirement cost increase, the number of times an animal presses the bar equal to or greater than the bar pressing requirement payment decreases. Topic: <laughs> Evolutionary psychology. An evolutionary psychology perspective states that many of the perceived limitations in rational choice can be explained as being rational in the context of maximizing biological fitness in the ancestral environment, but not necessarily in the current one. Thus, when living at subsistence level where a reduction of resources may result in death, it may have been rational to place a greater value on preventing losses than on obtaining gains. It may also explain behavioral differences between groups, such as males being less risk-averse than females since males have more variable reproductive success than females. While unsuccessful risk-seeking may limit reproductive success for both sexes, males may potentially increase their reproductive success from successful risk-seeking much more than females can. Topic. Artificial intelligence Much of the decisions are more and more made either by human beings with the assistance of artificial intelligent machines or wholly made by these machines. Shaliji Marwala and Evan Hurwitz in their book, studied the utility of behavioral economics in such situations and concluded that these intelligent machines reduce the impact of bounded rational decision making. In particular, they observed that these intelligent machines reduce the degree of information asymmetry in the market, improve decision making and thus making markets more rational. The use of AI machines in the market in applications such as online trading and decision making has changed major economic theories. Other theories where AI has had impact include in rational choice, rational expectations, game theory, Lewis turning point, portfolio optimization and counterfactual thinking. Topic. Related fields Topic. Experimental economics. 
Experimental economics is the application of experimental methods, including statistical, econometric, and computational, to study economic questions. Data collected in experiments are used to estimate effect size, test the validity of economic theories, and illuminate market mechanisms. Economic experiments usually use cash to motivate subjects, in order to mimic real-world incentives. Experiments are used to help understand how and why markets and other exchange systems function as they do. Experimental economics have also expanded to understand institutions and the law experimental law and economics. A fundamental aspect of the subject is design of experiments. Experiments may be conducted in the field or in laboratory settings, whether of individual or group behavior. Variants of the subject outside such formal confines include natural and quasi-natural experiments. Topic neuroeconomics Neuroeconomics is an interdisciplinary field that seeks to explain human decision-making, the ability to process multiple alternatives and to follow a course of action. It studies how economic behavior can shape our understanding of the brain, and how neuroscientific discoveries can constrain and guide models of economics. It combines research methods from neuroscience, experimental and behavioral economics, and cognitive and social psychology. As research into decision-making behavior becomes increasingly computational, it has also incorporated new approaches from theoretical biology, computer science, and mathematics. Neuroeconomics studies decision-making by using a combination of tools from these fields so as to avoid the shortcomings that arise from a single perspective approach. In mainstream economics, expected utility and the concept of rational agents are still being used. Many economic behaviors are not fully explained by these models, such as heuristics and framing. Behavioral economics emerged to account for these anomalies by integrating social, cognitive, and emotional factors in understanding economic decisions. Neuroeconomics adds another layer by using neuroscientific methods in understanding the interplay between economic behavior and neural mechanisms. By using tools from various fields, some scholars claim that neuroeconomics offers a more integrative way of understanding decision-making. Topic notable theorists Topic Economics Topic Psychology Topic Finance Topic See also Topic Citations Topic References Ainsley, G. 1975. Specious Reward, A Behavioral, Theory of Impulsiveness and Impulse Control. Psychological Bulletin. 82 463-96. Doi 10.1037 per hours 0076860. PMID 1099599. Barbarus N. Schleifer A. Vishni R. 1998. A model of investor sentiment. Journal of Financial Economics. 49 3 307-43. Doi 10.1016/s0304405x980027-0. Archived from the original on the 20th of April 2008. Retrieved the 25th of April 2008. Becker, Gary S. 1968. Crime and Punishment: An Economic Approach. The Journal of Political Economy. 76 169 to 217. DOI 259394 Bennert C. Shlomo, Toller, Richard H. 1995. Myopic Loss Aversion and the Equity Premium Puzzle. The Quarterly Journal of Economics. The MIT Press. 110 73-92. JSTOR 2,118,511. Cunningham, Lawrence A. 2002. Behavioral Finance and Investor Governance. Washington and Lee Law Review. 59-767. doi. 10.2139, SSRN.255778. ISSN 1942-6658. Daniel, K. Herschleifer, D. Subramaniam, A. 1998. Investor Psychology and Security Market Under and Overreactions. Journal of Finance. 53 6, 1839-85. doi, 10.1111, 0022-1082.00077. Diamond, Peter, Varshainen, Hanu, 2012. Behavioral Economics and Its Applications. Princeton University Press. ISBN 1-4008-2914-3.
Eat Well, John, Milgate, Murray, Newman, Peter, eds. 1988. The New Palgrave, A Dictionary of Economics. Macmillan. ISBN 978-0-935859-10-2, Augier, Mie. Simon, Herbert A. 1916-2001. Bernheim, B. Douglas, Rangel, Antonio. Behavioral Public Economics. Bloomfield, Robert. Behavioral Finance. Simon, Herbert A. Rationality, Bounded. Genesov, David, Mayer, Christopher March 2001. Loss Aversion and Seller Behavior, Evidence from the Housing Market. Quarterly Journal of Economics. 116 4, 1233-1260. doi, 10.1162, 0033553017532655561. S. Taller, R. H. 2001. Behavioral Economics. International Encyclopedia of the Social and Behavioral Sciences pp. 1094-1100. doi, 10.1016, b0-08-043076-7, 02247 6 Garay, Laszlo the 1st of December 2016. Reconsidering Identity Economics. New York, Palgrave Macmillan U.S. pp. 35-40. Doi 10.1057/978-1-137-52561-1 underscore three. ISBN 9 trillion seven hundred eighty one billion one hundred thirty seven million five hundred twenty five thousand six hundred four. McGehee, E. 2014. Behavioral Economics and Labor Law. Papers. SSRN. Com. SSRN 2,435,111. Hens, Thorsten, Bachmann, Kremina 2008. Behavioral Finance for Private Banking. Wiley Finance Series. ISBN 0-470-77999-3. Hogarth, R. M., Redder, M. W. Rational Choice – The Contrast Between Economics and Psychology. Chicago – University of Chicago Press. ISBN 0-226-34857-1. Kahneman, Daniel, Tversky, Amos 1979. Prospect Theory, An Analysis of Decision Under Risk. Econometrica. The Econometric Society. 47 263-91. doi, 10.2307-1914185. JSTOR 1914185. Kahneman, Daniel, Diener, ed. 2003. Well-Being, The Foundations of Hedonic Psychology. Russell Sage Foundation. Kirkpatrick, Charles D., Dahlquist, Julie R. 2007. Technical Analysis, The Complete Resource for Financial Market Technicians. Upper Saddle River, N.J., Financial Times Press. ISBN 0-13-153113-1. Curran, Timur Private Truths, Public Lies, The Social Consequences of Preference Falsification. Harvard University Press. pp. 7. ISBN 978-0-674-70758-0. Description Luce, R. Duncan 2000. Utility of Gains and Losses, Measurement Theoretical and Experimental Approaches. Mawa, New Jersey, Lawrence Erlbaum Publishers. ISBN 0-8058-3460-5. Plot, Charles R., Smith, Vernon L. 2008. Handbook of Experimental Economics Results, 1. Elsevier. Chapter Preview Links. Rabin, Matthew. 1998. Psychology and Economics. PDF. Journal of Economic Literature. 36, 1, 11 46. Archived from the original PDF on September 27, 2011. Sheffron, Hirsch. 2002. Behavioral Decision Making, Forecasting, Game Theory, and Role Play PDF. International Journal of Forecasting, 18-375-382. Skelling, Thomas C. 2006. Micromotives and Macrobehavior. W. W. Norton. ISBN 978-0-393-06977-8. Description Schleifer, Andre. Inefficient Markets, An Introduction to Behavioral Finance. New York, Oxford University Press. ISBN 0-19-829228-7.
Simon, Herbert A. 1987. Behavioral Economics. The New Palgrave, A Dictionary of Economics, 1. pp. 221-24. Toller, Richard H., Mullanathan, Sendhill 2008. Behavioral Economics. In David R. Henderson, ed. Concise Encyclopedia of Economics, 2nd ed. Indianapolis, Library of Economics and Liberty. ISBN 978-0-86597-665-8. OCLC 237794267, CS1 maint, Extra Text, Editors List, Link, Behavioral Economics in U.S. Antitrust, Scholarly Papers. Le Concurrentialist. Topic. External links. The Behavioral Economics Guide Overview of Behavioral Finance The Institute of Behavioral Finance Sterling Behavioral Science Blog, of the Sterling Behavioral Science Center at University of Sterling Society for the Advancement of Behavioral Economics Behavioral Economics, Past, Present, Future, Colin F. Kammerer and George Lawenstein a History of Behavioral Finance, Economics in Published Research, 1944-1988 MSc Behavioral Economics, MSc in Behavioral Economics at the University of Essex Behavioral Economics of Shipping Business